Hi and welcome back to the training and to the next lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna convert or invert a black and white negative. After inverting the negative, we're gonna take, we will do some sharpening, and after sharpening, we will take care of the contrast of the image. After taking care of the contrast, we're gonna remove some unwanted parts on her skin, like doing a very basic retouch with removing some uh, pimples and so on. And then we're gonna clean up the overall image again. So we're using some of the techniques we've learned before and I'm gonna also introduce one or two new techniques to you. So let's jump right in. Here we go with our negative. This is a six by six image shot with a Hasselblad 500 cm. Just in case you're interested in these details. Okay. Now, since this is a grayscale image and has no color information, it is not possible to use the develop persona. I'm gonna demonstrate this to you right now. It says, cannot develop, please select an RGB pixel layer before developing. Since we do not have any RGB information and this is a grayscale image, we're gonna simply work within um, the photo persona. It's not a problem. I just want you to know this because maybe it happens to you that it says it cannot open the develop persona and now you know why. Okay, let's go to the layer panel, make sure all background layers are selected, go to the adjustment layer panel and again choose invert. And we nearly instantly have a nice inversion of this image. Now what I see here of course is that this image has absolutely not enough contrast. But as I already mentioned we're gonna take care about this later. For now, let's go back to the layers panel and create a new merge layer. Go back to the layers panel and delete the invert adjustment layer because we do not need it anymore. Now let's duplicate this pixel layer and let's zoom quite a bit in, I'd say to her eye here, that's great. And as I already mentioned, we're gonna now sharpening the image with the last method I offered you to, for, for sharpening. And this is the so-called frequency separation technique. So let's go to the filters, sharpen, and choose frequency separation. Now here we're gonna use a much higher radius than 2.0. I would say we're going up to as radius of 5 or 5.2. Let's go with 5. Let's check this and it already looks great. Now let me explain this tool to you. So let me explain this tool to you real quick. Here on the left we have the radius where as before we can choose the pixel radius. Here we have a tool that says tolerance. This doesn't do anything as long as we are not using the protective option, which is this alpha sign here. If we use this, we can make use of the tolerance tool, which sometimes comes in quite handy, but in this situation, I do not wanna use it. So I'm gonna switch this back to off because we're gonna use this for sharpening and not for portrait retouch. Now we stay with 5.0 pixels and hit apply. And there we go. Now for those of you that never ever before worked with image editing or with frequency separation, this now looks as if nothing had happened. What frequency separation is doing, it is separating the image into its two frequencies, a low and a high frequency. The thing that we are needing is the high, high frequency. So let's go into the image panel, deactivate the high frequency layer for a moment, go down to the low frequency layer and delete it. We don't need it anymore. Also, we can go in here to the high frequency layer and rename, rename it to sharpen. Hit OK. Now go back to the layers panel and activate the sharpen layer. And you will see an immediate and extreme amount of sharpening. I like this strong amount of sharpening. Anyhow, if you do not like it, you can go into the layers options and bring it down to about 60%. Okay, let's, let's bring it down just a bit. 
And here you see a before and after, and we introduced quite a nice amount of sharpening, without introducing too much of grain into the image. I really love this sharpening method, this usually is my go-to method if I have more time. So what have we done so far? We inverted the image. We duplicated the layer and we carried out a so-called frequency separation on it. We choose our radius, we hit OK, we deleted the low frequency layer and used the high frequency layer as our sharpening layer. The next thing we're going to do is taking care of the super low contrast of this image. OK now. Therefore, we have some different tools. Before we start in, let's create a new merge visible layer. Great. Now go back in and delete the sharpen layer since we do not need it anymore. Okay. One of the tools we could use is the curves adjustment tool or could use the levels adjustment. I'm going to show you how to use the curves adjustment real quick. Choose the curves adjustment layer, open the spline, bring in the blacks till they nearly clip and then bring down the curve to introduce lots of contrast and also bring the whites back up again but not too far, you don't want to clip the whites so make this very careful. And here we go with a somehow nice result. Maybe it's a little bit too strong exposed here, a bit too much of white. So we can bring this a bit down again. So this is option number one. And I kind of like this option. What we also could do is we could bring in the lights this way here, like so. And I really love to work with the curves layer, but for now I'm gonna delete it. The next thing is we could use the levels layer. Therefore, we would simply raise the blacks or darken them down as you want it, however you want to call it. We leave the whites as they are and we just play with the gamma. This also gives us a quite nice result. And the last technique we could use is using the auto levels again and combine this technique with a curves layer. So let's delete this for, for a second. Now let's go back to the layers panel, make sure we've selected the top layer, go in to the filters, choose colors, even though we have no colors and say auto levels. And this nearly perfectly brought in our black and white tones. Great. What we're going to do next, is go and create another curves adjustment layer, open the spline and bring this part here quite a bit down, like so. And this part here a bit up, but not too much. We don't want to overblow the image. Great. So since I know this image, and I already printed it into the dark room. I know that we can in real life go even further down with making this image black. And now it seems like we are losing some detail in the hair. What we are going to do in this case is as before, we simply introduce a masking technique. Now let's go to the layer panel, create a new mask. This time we're going to create a usual mask. Go in, take the brush tool, make sure black is your foreground color, you have an opacity of 17%. Go close to the hair. It's important to go close here since if you're further away the iPad is over contrasty and you're not going to see the important details. Okay. Make sure you have your mask selected and paint back in some of the details. But don't overdo this. Okay. 
Okay. I feel that this already could have been a little too much. So we're gonna go in here, uh, go to the layer options and bring down the opacity quite a bit, like so. And I think this really is enough, because if we go closer again, you can see that there is still enough detail inside of the hair. You just don't see it because of the over contrasty screen of the iPad. And you just have to, well, get used to it. Okay. Now let's go back into the layer panel and create a new merge layer. Great. Uh, what we're going to do now is saving the image by simply jumping out of the image. And after it has, after it finished saving, we're gonna jumping back into the image. Now with the top layer selected, we're gonna create a new layer, a new empty pixel layer, and we call this layer repair. And hit okay. Great. Now let's go back. And let's delete the curves adjustment because we don't need it anymore. And let's jump back to the repair layer. Let's choose our healing brush tool. Go to the options and say current layer and below. So now it, we are sampling from the layer below, but we are painting onto a new layer. That's super important. So we're, use, we're working kind of non-destructive. Okay, let's zoom in and let's remove just some of these not so beautiful, well, spots here. Okay. Make sure the brush is not too big and start sampling from the image area, like so. Also make sure not to remove things that belong there, like scars or something like this, okay? We don't wanna, wanna remove scars since scars belong to the human and uh, they are not gonna change. There are no pimples, so scars, I never remove scars or something like this. But we can remove these white dots here. Great. Now let's see, maybe we have some, well, let's call it imperfections here as well. Great. And these bigger imperfections, you would also be able to do this in the dark room with uh, bleaching or with dye and spot them with darker colors if these are lighter spots. Now we're gonna remove this here. Great, I'm gonna remove this here. Okay, let's also remove some of these parts here. Let's make this image look somehow nice. Great. But since this is not a portrait recharge training, we're gonna not gonna overdo this. Okay, let's remove the hair, since we already know our other techniques aren't quite as happy when it comes to hair or something like this, or to too big spots. So let's also go in and remove spots that are too big for our other methods of repairing. Let's go here. Great. Now that's it for the healing brush, for the moment at least. Now go in and create a new merge layer. We can now delete the healing brush layer and the layer below this layer. Now duplicate this layer again and simply call it dust and scratches. You already know what's coming. 
Now we're gonna use dust and scratches and an actual wonderful image. Okay, let's save this. Yeah, I recommend you saving as often as possible or to uh, change the setting for auto savings. Okay, make sure the DNS layer is selected and jump back in, filter dialog and change to noise and go down to dust and scratches. Now set all of this to zero, go in here, super close and now bring the pixels up quite a bit until the white spots are disappearing. Don't overdo it. If there aren't all white spots disappearing, well, we will have to do some work by hand and that's super okay. Like seven or eight should be absolutely enough for this image. I wouldn't go any further. Now let's bring back the detail. Since we do not want to destroy grain, especially not with black and white images. Okay, now let's check in the split if we destroy grain. No, we don't. Hit apply. And as before, create an empty mask layer. Go choose the brush tool, make white your foreground color, and as before, with an opacity of 100%, paint out the white spots. Because we don't want to see them and they make the image more ugly, you know? And this is really not an ugly image. And don't forget to take care about your highlights. For example, if I go with this earring now, it won't look too nice. So we undo this. Also don't go over her eyes or something like this. The highlights there are super sensitive to this tool. Also her necklace will uh, react to this tool super weird. I'm gonna show this to you for a moment. So this reacts super smudgy and does not look nice anymore. Especially the angel I'm quite sure will look super weird if you go over it. So just for you to check this, see the angel, it's not looking great anymore. So we undo this. We don't want to smudge an angel. Okay. Let's go in here and here. Great. Now this really looks wonderful. And you see, I already speed up the whole training because now from picture to picture, you should already understand the older techniques. That's why I'm not taking too much time with the older techniques because I think you already understood them and I don't want you to be, well, become boring. Okay, let's create a new, pixel, uh, a new merge layer, merge visible. Delete the layer below. We don't need it anymore. You can also delete this pixel layer now. Great. Now create a new empty pixel layer. Go back to the healing brush and let's remove this bigger parts. Oh, and I forgot to say current and below. Let's remove these bigger parts. that the tool did not want to remove. And let's make sure everything looks just fine. I also see I forgot some, well, imperfections. I don't like to talk about imperfections because I, to be honest, think people aren't imperfect People are just different. Not everybody is the same as another person and I don't think we should over perfectionate people and also not in images. But since I work in this industry, I'm super used to it and I have to do it all the time. So yeah. But I choose analog photography for exactly not doing this. But since there are people out there that like to do this, I'm of course gonna show you how it works. 
because everybody has to decide for himself if he likes it or not. Okay, great. Now we already achieved quite a great image or super nice look. What I want to do now is I want to darken this area here, the left area. Let me choose the tool, uh, the, the hand tool real quick. Uh, I want to darken this area down quite a bit more. And therefore we will introduce dodging and burning. Well, those of you that worked in the darkroom before already know what this means. And we're not going to use the dodging and burning tool since I do not like them. So let's create a new empty layer. And we're going to call this layer D and B for dodging and burning. Okay, and I'm just going to darken this down with a pencil real quickly. Therefore we go to our paintbrush tool. I always say pencil, I'm so sorry. Choose black as our foreground color. Make this super huge. And now we're going to paint in here real quick. And you could also do this in the darkroom. Dodging and burning actually comes from analog photography, so this is super possible to do, and this was too much. And that's why I'm doing it. I always try to do stuff on my digital editings that I could also do in the darkroom. Now let's go in here. And let's change the brand mode from normal to soft light. Now this became quite a lot darker and I like it. But maybe it's too strong so bring it down to about 70%. Great. I like it quite a lot. Go in, make sure we didn't attack the hair too much. And if we did, we this time simply take the eraser brush, make it super huge. Not too huge maybe. And we're gonna free the hair just a bit. Yeah, that's better. And you see, the iPad is already starting doing weird stuff again. So this is the right point to maybe save the image again. And what I can see now is, for some reason, this looks like a halo. Yes, the eraser brush deleted way too much of the image. Okay, um, undo current selection, undo set visibility, erase brush tool, erase brush tool, erase brush tool. Yes, oh, this did a lot of bad things here. Okay, that's great. Let's stay with this now. Now, one of the last things I want to do to this image is I want to crop it again because I do not like the black borders since they are not super, well, accurate. Let's go in. And since this is a 6x6 image, I want to have this in a 1 by one ratio. Great. Now bring this in. And hit apply. Now that's the way to edit a black and white picture. So what have we learned in this lesson? Let's have a look at it. We inverted the image, we sharpened it using the frequency separation method. We introduced contrast, we learned three different methods to introduce contrast. The curves adjustment, the levels tool, the auto levels tool, the auto levels tool combined with the curves adjustment. We did some dodging and burning and we used the healing brush tool again. Also we again used our dust and scratches filter to create a super clean image. Now let's have a look at our general before and after by simply creating a new merge layer. This will take some time now. Great. Now let's deactivate all of these layers and let's have a look at our before and 
our after. Before, after. And as I already mentioned, if you want to have more details in her hair, or if you want to preserve more of the details in her hair, simply go in, mask out the hair, or, yeah, or reduce the contrast in the hair. There are so many different things you could do. Simply try, and always try. Trying is super important in when it comes to photography or image editing. You can't really destroy it. If you destroy it or mess it up completely, well, close the day, close the file, open it up again and start from the beginning. Okay, that's it for now. In the next lesson, I'm gonna show you one more way where the auto levels tool comes in super handy when restorating old images. And then we are nearly finished with this training. I hope you liked this lesson and see you in the next lesson.